Matt Holtquist here with the QuickBooks University. Hey, I wanted to go through and show you how to fix errors in your undeposited funds account. I get this question quite a bit. You know, somebody takes over uh, the accounting, the QuickBooks for, you know, a previous person or, you know, a business owner has uh, all these hanging items in undeposited funds and they want to know how to fix it. Okay. So, what I'm going to do in this video is walk you through how to fix that for the current year. Okay, if you have prior year undeposited funds amounts, uh, this could be done differently, uh, mainly because you don't want to necessarily go back and change prior years uh, if the tax returns have been filed and it depends on the amounts. Uh, so there's some judgment involved. Uh, so that's going to require kind of a, a different level of thinking. Okay. So first what I want to do is go through just a, a quick little, I put this together here, just the process in QuickBooks. Okay. So you invoice your customer and then you receive your customer payment. And when you receive that payment, most times, and I'll show you why I say most, that money goes to what's called undeposited funds in QuickBooks. And then you deposit that money to the bank. It comes out of undeposited funds and goes to your checking, savings, whatever the bank account is. Okay, this is where most errors occur, all right, is that step between undeposited funds and deposit to bank. All right, so what you have to first do in your QuickBooks file is go to your preferences. Okay, so if we go to edit, we go to preferences. Okay, and we go to this payments option here and go to company preferences. You're going to see an option here that says use undeposited funds as a default deposit to account. That means that every time you receive a payment from a customer, that payment is going to go to this undeposited funds account. And the theory being that you're going to receive payments throughout the week, let's say, or for a few days, and you're not going to the bank immediately. So QuickBooks uh, doesn't want you to show that money as if it's in your checking account when it really isn't. All right. So when you do physically go to the bank, you would move it from undeposited funds to the checking account. All right. So if you don't want to do this and every time you receive a customer payment, you have it deposit to the checking account or whatever account, uh, you can uncheck this box. But most times that's going to be checked. It's kind of a safety net, essentially, so you don't overstate your bank balances. All right. So let's hit, hit OK. All right. So let's take an example here. Uh, let's say that we receive a payment from a customer and we go to customers we say receive payments and we're going to say christy abercrombie bathroom remodel all right so she has two of them here and this one is 4522 so let's say that she makes a two thousand dollar payment on that all right and we say it's a check and we put in the check number all right and it'll show two thousand dollar payment and we hit uh, save and close. All right. So what happened to that? Okay. So that amount, that $2,000 went to this undeposited funds account. So when we go to the bank, we go to banking, make deposits, and you're going to see that the $2,000 payment here is showing in undeposited funds. So if we're going to the bank and we say, here's the $2,000, we're going to make this deposit in QuickBooks and we hit save and close. Okay. Now we're going to see that it's going to show up in our checking account. All right. I think this was right here, 1215, $2,000. And you'll see that it came from undeposited funds. All right. Now, if you don't do the undeposited funds step, it will just go to your checking account. All right. So where do the errors occur? Well, they can occur in a couple of, couple of different places. Okay. So let's go back up here and we say customers. Let's say we follow this process. We say receive payments. And we say, again, this is Christy Abercrombie Remodel Bathroom. And she pays the rest of the 2522. Okay. So we say 2522. Uh, check number 5241. And we hit, it's applied to that invoice. We hit save and close. 
okay? So now let's say that we're going to the bank later in the week and we don't follow the process of receiving payments, all right? So instead, we just go to our, you know, uh, checking account register, and we just say this is a deposit from Christy Abercrombie, and we're going to say that it's 2522, and we're going to say, huh, what was this for? Well, most people will just go through and say, okay, well, this was for, uh, you know, whatever they think it's for, okay, uh, design income, all right? and they record it, okay? So we have a deposit here of 2522 in the check register because we went and made that deposit. But if we didn't follow the step of banking make deposits and check this off, it's just gonna stay there, all right? It's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, so, so what happens in this situation, okay? Well, what essentially is happening is that you are double counting that income. All right, so in the first case, when you recorded that original invoice for 4,522, uh, you put it to certain items and you recorded revenue in your profit and loss. Well, when we just recorded that deposit for 2,522, go to my check register here, we put that again to another revenue item, design income. So now we are double counting our revenue, okay? And this is a big problem, okay? So what often happens when you have these items that are hanging out in undeposited funds is that revenue has been double counted, okay? So unfortunately, the best way to fix this is you are gonna have to go through each of your undeposited funds amounts and again, this is why I say if it's for this year, it's going to make it a little bit simpler, hopefully. Uh, and you're going to have to go through each one of these and match up where that deposit might be in your check register. All right. So if the 2522 came in, you're going to have to go to the check register. And I always tell people you're going to have to void this deposit. Okay. I don't like deleting. Um, I just like to void, that way we have a record of it. If we say void deposit, hit record, okay? And then go to banking, make deposits, okay? Let me close this so the screen comes back up. Then make that deposit, all right? So what do you do if this happened in a previous bank period that you have already reconciled? Well, you're going to have to go back and unreconcile that statement uh, that month for the checking account and re-reconcile it. Okay, and the issue is, you're if if you do not uh, get this out of undeposited funds, uh, and you do reconcile, you'll be able to reconcile for that month, and that money will still be hanging out in that undeposited funds account. So, if it's for a previous month during the current year, you're going to have to. Uh, um, unreconcile the account for that month, record the deposit correctly, and then re-reconcile the account. So it will take some investigation, some work for you to figure out, um, you know, where the issue is so that you can go back and fix it. All right. So it can get a little bit complicated, but it's doable. Uh, you just got to figure out where those amounts are coming from and how they got recorded uh, incorrectly in the first place, and you'll be on your way to fixing it. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me and head on over for the full QuickBooks training at QuickBooks University. That's qbuniversity.org.